here to we move from here to uh, model two, which is the production possibilities frontier. The production possibilities frontier is a graph in two dimensions, and in this in this simplification, we're going to consider uh, an economy that produces exactly two things: they produce cars and they produce computers. And as we increase the number of cars, we move along the horizontal axis. As we increase the number of computers, we move along the vertical axis. And what the uh, what the production possibilities frontier is going to tell us are the different combinations of output that a given economy can produce given the factors of production and production technology. So consider this, uh, consider this graph here, the, the, this graph that we've drawn. <clears throat> what it tells us, what this line here represents is a sort of boundary. This is the frontier. The production possibilities frontier is the boundary of goods and services that can be produced in this economy. What it says here is that if, if the economy devoted all of its resources to producing cars, it could produce a thousand, but no more. If it devoted all of its resources to producing computers, it could produce three thousand, but no more. This is the production possibilities frontier. It also tells us that if it wished, it could produce 700 cars, and 2,000 computers. This is on the boundary. Right? This, is a, uh, this is an attainable point. We also can see that it's possible for the economy to produce 300 cars and 1,000 computers, but it can do better. Right? These things are attainable by the economy. And in fact, everything inside our production possibilities frontier is what's attainable. We could also do A, 600 cars, 2,200 computers produced, right? If we wanted to go, if we wanted to move between these two points, it would involve a trade-off going from uh, going from the quantity of cars, uh, going from a, a quantity of 700 cars down to 600, but going from 2,000 computers to 2,200. We would be having a trade-off between cars and computers. The last point that we consider, point C, is not attainable. We can't get here. This is beyond our boundary. This might be something like 450 cars and 2,800 computers. Certainly, we could not do 1,000 and 3,000. Okay. Now, it's important to note that the combinations that are represented by the production possibilities frontier depend on two things. The first one is the factors of production. How much land, labor, and capital do we have in the economy? How many workers, how many households are supplying their factors of production? And then the second one is production technology. How skilled are firms at putting things together? How skilled are firms at putting together all of the pieces of the puzzle to make goods and services? We're going to consider four things that, the, that, that this graph is going to give us some insights about. We're going to learn some things about scarcity. We're going to learn some things about what's meant by trade-offs. We're going to define opportunity costs. And we're also going to discuss economic efficiency. So here's our production possibilities frontier. We consider point B. Uh, here's our production possibilities frontier. What scarcity says is that there are things that we can't do, things like point C that we cannot do. The trade-offs we note that if we want to go from A to B, we're going to have to give up something to get something. Opportunity costs, this, this trade-off that we talk about, moving from A to B, is referred to as an opportunity cost. If we wanted to move from A to E, that would be another way to think about opportunity costs. Uh, and then efficiency. Efficiency says that if we're here, if we're at A or B or even E, we're producing efficiently. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute. Uh, point D is someplace that's inefficient. It's possible, but it's inefficient. 